Hello Love again. Uh, got another review coming up. This time around it will be Copperberg Orange Ginger Beer. Now I know what you're thinking, Copperberg, isn't that that company from Sweden that makes those sort of crazy sweet fruit ciders like your lime and strawberry cider and your mixed berry cider? Yes, it is. You're right to think that. But they've started branching out into other things. They've done, a, um, they've done another one a while ago and I can't remember what it is but I've reviewed it and it wasn't really that spectacular. I wouldn't recommend it, whatever it was, because it wasn't very nice from what I remember. I just don't remember what it was, you know, because I'm not very smart. But yeah, the, yeah, the Al Copperberg, I used to drink it a lot when I was about in my early 20s. You know, I used to drink the, the mixed berry. I used to like the strawberry and lime one in moderation, but it was a bit sweet. So, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think it was like beer with a little bit of orange in it, I think. That, that's what the one I had, I think. But yeah, I digress. I used to drink the Al Copperberg back in the day. It used to be the mixed berry one. It was always very nice. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've, I've lost the sweet tooth that I used to. You know, because they always say with age comes wisdom. But with me, I just get toothaches. It, it's with age comes weight gain, tiredness and toothaches. Yeah, and, and hair loss. But thankfully I haven't lost this yet. Give it like five more years or, you know. I'll probably look like balls and bankrupt minus the beard. Yeah. I wouldn't mind the, uh, you know, wouldn't mind the, the trips to like Russia and Colombia and Cuba or wherever the fuck he goes to. That would be interesting, but I haven't got the money for that right now. Uh, but what I do have is the ability to review beer on a stingy right eye. And I'm going to make the most of both of them things right now uh, by doing this. This is a Copperberg. Alcoholic Orange Ginger Beer from the Copperberg Brewery or Brigeri as they call it in Sweden uh, and it's a 4.0% refreshing and aromatic tasting orange ginger beer established 1882 Let's have a look what it says on the back It says Copperberg's Ginger Beer Orange is a refreshing and fiery mix of our ginger beer and orange flavour Skull yeah, um, so yeah, it's a 500 ml bottle and it's 4.0%. What more can I say about it other than the fact that it's, it's copper bag branching out as they have been doing for the last couple of years. And you know, let's, let's hope they continue because you know, that's, that's what you want and you, know, you, you don't want a, a company to just be a one trick pony. You want them to sort of think to themselves, the sky's the limit. Not necessarily monopolise, but challenge those who can monopolise, you know, i.e. like your Heineken's or whoever. Um, you know, good luck to them anyway. Let's hope this is good for that reason. So yeah, it's a uh, orange ginger beer. What will it look like when it's in the, the glass? I don't know. Let's pour it in, shall we? Let's just pop this open. Actually, you know what? I'm going to uh, show you the bottle first. My eyes are a bit stingy, so I thought it was. So yeah, it, it, it is, it's the, the logo. It's got a bit of a... A splat. Uh, there's all the writing. There's your bottle top right here. And I just want to see that. That's the best part of the video. Um, and look, here's the little bit. It says score. It looks like it says scal, but that has an accent over it, a Scandinavian accent, which makes it sound more of a uh rather than a ah. So, yeah, there's your culture for the music. Uh, so, yeah, let's get this fuck out of the bottle, shall we? Let's see what it looks like. And from there we'll sniff it and we'll drink it. And then after that we'll turn the video off and then we'll go to bed. Because it's four in the morning right now. And I can't sleep but my eyes are starting to get a bit heavy. So if I seem a bit sort of ropey in this video, uh, not just like looking and talking about acting as well, you know why. It's because, you know, I'm a bit sleepy. Oh, and by the way, I'm not doing this in a different room. I'm just doing it from a different location. I'm using a dining table for the camera this time rather than a mantelpiece. I'm not sitting on the couch anymore, the couch is there. This time I'm sitting on an armchair. So yeah, <laughs> at least that's sorted anyway. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's some props obviously, there's a cushion and some tissues. Yeah. Just in case I like, need to blow my nose during this video, which I doubt I will. 
Yeah, here we go, let's get this out the bowl. Obviously, don't expect much of a head. It's a, yeah, it's a, again, it's, it's, it's like one of those, you know when you, uh, you leave a painting for like ages and it sort of develops a skin on it? And I was like, that colour, this is the colour of this. Obviously, since it's a ginger beer made by Copperberg, it's going to have a lot of carbonation. Lots of it. Zero head, what to speak of. You know, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Really. Obviously, it's clear because it's not like sediments in it or anything. It's a ginger beer. So, what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? Let's get the show on the road, shall we? This fucking eye is doing me out I'm sorry about this one as well. Well, the fuck? <laughs> I think that's next door. But yeah, <laughs> if they might pick that up, then uh, you know, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to be very disappointed when I say this. It's an alcoholic orange ginger beer, which smells like alcohol, orange, and ginger beer. There's not much more I can say really. So why don't we just drink it? <laughs> will it be copper big? Or will it be proper tears? There's only one way to find out, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. And up your bottoms. There we go. Cheers. Well, I'm going to be honest, it's not bad, it's not bad at all, this one's good, however my only real gripe is they may as well just not advertise the orange part of the ginger beer, they may as well just advertise ginger beer, you know like Krabby's does, do the Copperberg version of ginger beer, and just leave it at that because that can't taste any orange, I'll be honest, I just cannot taste it, I can smell a bit. No, I can't taste any ginger beer at all. Sorry, I can't taste any orange in it at all. Obviously, I taste the ginger beer, but the orange is just, it's just not there. The aftertaste is ginger beer. The taste is ginger beer. The mouthfeel is carbonated ginger beer with a bit of alcohol in it. But no element of orange whatsoever. I just cannot get a, even the slightest little bit. But it is nice. It is nice if you like your ginger beer. I'd go for this one. I really would. Uh, is it better than Krabby's? Yay or nay? I don't know. <laughs> because I've never had it. So yeah. Um, you know. Maybe maybe in another video I'll do Krabby's ginger beer. And then we'll do a comparison. Maybe do I like that more? Or do I like this more? Either way. I like this. So if the Krabby's is as good as this. Win win. Um, so yeah. Uh, there's not much I can really say in this video now because I've kind of covered all the bases. Um, what shall I talk about? Shall I talk about Everton? I mean, I don't want to because they're playing tomorrow. And normally when I talk about Everton, I normally jinx them. Um, but they're playing Man United tomorrow and they've had 10 points deducted. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I feel a bit. The, the, the optimism is not that high. It kind of was we were building it. And then the fucking Premier League and the fucking Independent Commission decided. I think it's time to pull that fucking rug from under you, Evertonians. <laughs> Yunk. And then it happened again. Now we're back down there in the bottom fucking three. Um, but, but, our saving grace is the bottom three is doing fucking shite right now. And. You know, we're left up in a couple of games and we're out of it. So, you know, deduction or no deduction. You know, maybe, maybe they'll prop us up. Who knows, who knows. Again, I'm not going to pray for anyone's relegation because that's like horrible, bitter prick shit. 
I wouldn't even play for that on, on for Liverpool. You know why? Because I see this all the time, you know, when I'm live on like a Facebook or whatever, and there's a post about Everton, like i.e. you know, news about Everton or you know, players doing like signings and talks or maybe even like a little post about the new stadium, you always get a fuck ton of little wank stains. Now I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna say the copites, but they're not really because a true copite just supports Liverpool and that's that. The only team that's important to them is Liverpool. They go the match, they support the team and they leave it at that. Because that's all that matters to them. Whereas the gobshites that I'm talking about here, the ones who you know, are the ones who like they've never been to a fucking match in their life. They just sit there clapping out of telly whenever the match is on. Oh or whenever they score. Whenever like they don't score they sort of just like pull out the phone and start like looking at Instagram or fucking Facebook or Twitter or probably plenty of fish or I don't know. You know, they're not fans at all. And we know this because, like I say, a Liverpool fan who's a true Liverpool fan would only focus on Liverpool. They wouldn't target Everton stuff and start talking shit and doing the trophy bragging and trying to antagonise everyone, trying to say, oh, you're just going down. It's pathetic, you know what I mean? Look, look, yes, Liverpool have achieved more historically than Everton have, but Everton have achieved more than Tranmere have. You'll never ever see a fucking Evertonian going into a Tranmere Rovers little fucking forum or Facebook post or whatever, giving them shit about the fact that we won a European Cup Winners Cup in 1985. Did you Tranmere? No, you didn't. <laughs> because that'd be fucking pathetic, wouldn't it? And yet, we see copites coming into the Everton forums and little spaces. And doing the trophy bragging there. By the way, trophy bragging is the most plastic thing a fan can do. Just saying. Because if you're a trophy bragger, it exposes you. It says more about you than your team or the team that you're trying to ridicule by comparison. Because it just shows that that's all you care about. You don't care about the team. You don't care about the culture of the team. You don't care about the the, 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 the foundation of the team. All you care about is the amount of trophies that you've won. You know what I mean? That, that you need an excuse to support your team. And that's the excuse. A real fan doesn't need an excuse. They just support them through thick and thin. Anyway. And we know this because if Liverpool were to ever like, fall by the wayside. And the same way like Forest have or Villa have or... You know what? I'll even give you fucking Everton. If they were to do go down the fucking tubes to an extent like Everton did or totally did with Forrest, those people who fucking do the trophy bragging and the trolling and the antagonising and other football teams spaces, they wouldn't support Liverpool anymore. <laughs> they'd turn their fucking backs on that team like that. They'd support someone else. They'd probably still be wearing a red jersey, let's be honest. But it'd probably have a fucking devil and a fucking sailboat on it because they'd be fucking supporting Man United and stuff. The fucking plastic twat. So yeah. There's a little rant for you. <clears throat> yeah, I hate that shit, you know. If you're gonna be a fucking fan, just be a fan. Don't be a fucking prick trying to cause shit, trying to start arguments, trying to wish fucking relegation on other teams. You know what I mean? You might they might be your fucking rivals, but you're just a bitter prick if you're doing that. There's no point, you know. You know, Liverpool were fucking on the verge of administration about well, just just over well, around about a decade ago. But uh, you know, I don't I wouldn't fucking do fucking laps of honour if that happens to them because at the end of the day that's you know that that's a fucking a team that's been going for well over a century and it's got fucking generations upon generations of fucking families supporting them. You know, dads well, granddads, dads, granddaughters, mums, whatever, who've took the kids to game and who've, you know, who've held that club to a high standard within their ass. The last thing I'd want to do is celebrate them fucking going tits up because the fans get it the most. And it's not good. It's pathetic. So yeah, um, there's me rant over. <laughs> yeah. Just thought I'd throw that out there just to make the video a bit longer anyway. 
because you know, we've only got about seven minutes long. So a good little ramble. It's what we need. Um maybe. But yeah, that's uh that concludes tonight's video, fucker. We've done enough. Um hope you've enjoyed it. Uh I've enjoyed this one. It's been a uh, piss, 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 piss. Uh, it's been nice. Uh, it's been fun. Would I get this again? I probably would. Yeah. I mean, I want. I, I would have preferred a bit of an orange kick just to justify the name, but yeah, you know, it, it isn't there. But that doesn't make me like it any less. Cause you know, a ginger beer is a ginger beer, and I always like it. With that little aftertaste of mouth as well. So yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll be uh, signing off. Take care, everyone.